So, uh, what period are you from? Oh, good morning. I am reenacting the 17th United States Infantry of the War of 1812. I serve as a lieutenant, a lieutenant because it's an American unit, not a lieutenant. And uh, I've been with this group for about 11 years. Finally, they commissioned me officer to get me away from doing actual good things. So, so, uh, so I'm, I've been part of this for quite a while. I enjoy it tremendously. We're glad to be out here at Bacchus Page House and doing this um, event, which you should know is the only reenacting event in Canada this year. So here we are. Well, it's uh, great to be interviewing you today. Thank um, you. I notice you have your pauldron on your left shoulder. What does yeah. that indicate? For the American service and actually the Crown service as well, the epaulette goes on the left shoulder for a lieutenant, on the right shoulder for a captain, on both shoulders for majors and higher. In the American service, silver takes precedence over gold. It's a little bit different. So um, that's why it's a silver epaulette. The artillery would wear a gold epaulette, and they'd also have a gold hackle in their shako. Uh, the cavalry wore a whole different uniform that doesn't even bear repeating here. And uh, so that's why that is. I'm wearing the summer uniform in white linen, which was supposed to be issued to troops south of the Potomac River for the summer, but uh, I wear it a lot because I personally have trouble with heat. I can't help myself on that one. But it also is quite nice on a day like today where you can, you're not sweating like crazy because our usual jackets are welted wool. They can be quite warm. So, and I have um, the officer's sash and the officer's sword which was a gift from the members of the company to me when they asked me to be lieutenants. <laughs> there you have it. Awesome. And I see the little emblem on your hat. What is that? With the front the, piece here? Yes. That's a generalized shako plate for the U.S. Army. It, again, it's in, a, in white metal because it's infantry. If it was artillery, it would be in yellow metal. But it's a very simple. The U.S. Eagle over arms. The shako is referred to as the tombstone shako because it has a raised front part that people thought looked like a tombstone. Hmm. Awesome. The, so that uh, this would be white for an ordinary soldier, but it's uh, got some silvery, silvery tint for an officer. Cool. So that little hip flask you're wearing, what would you keep in that? Water. <laughs> Only water. Sure. Remember always that gunpowder and alcohol do not mix get out of here i know what you're going to say so, <laughs> alcohol and, and gunpowder do not mix so you never want to drink and fire a musket so it's got water and it's important for reenactors to continually hydrate themselves because you do lose a lot of perspiration doing this even sitting with this outfit on you do you do perspire heavily now, um, I see we're flying a Canadian flag here. Could you yes. say why you're flying a Canadian flag even though you're American? Well, the flag is part of the area. It's part of the Bacchus Page territory here, the Bacchus Page property. This is a timeline, and every group that's involved here has something to do with Canadian history. The War of 1812, of course, there was, there was fighting all along the coast of Lake Erie. Uh, there was a raid up and down Highway 3 at one point in 1814 that went all the way up to the Grand River from from Windsor to the Grand River and then back again when they were uh, chased off by the militia and the British cavalry that was present. The American Civil War was over there. We say, why is that? 55,000 Canadians went south to join either the north or the south from that. The uh, First World War, obviously, the mounted rifles. Second World War, the same way. And also the uh, the members of the Mackenzie Papineau Battalion from the Spanish Civil War were volunteers who had gone to Spain to fight for the, the cause of, of what they believed to be freedom as opposed to the fascist, the fascist folks under General Franco. Fantastic. So everything, is, everything here has a Canadian, Canadian background to it. So uh, what roles are you playing in today's events? I will be commanding the raid on Colonel Talbot's house, even though this is not built at that time, a man will, will portray Colonel Talbot and the Americans will try to arrest him as they did three times and he always escaped. 
his house was a number of kilometers down that direction towards Fingal. Canadian renegades and American raiders tried to catch him and they were never able to. So he'll be out here uh, a quarter of 12 and then 12 we'll have the raid and we'll, we will, uh, pardon me for using my fingers, uh, loot the house. There's certain <laughs> items that are not easily damaged that we run out and steal. There'll be some some musket fire between us and the Crown Forces to chase us off. And the Crown Forces and First Nations will have the raiders from the American Army and the and the Kentucky Volunteers will be chased away. Fantastic. So that's that. My name is John Goldsworthy. I'm from St. Thomas, Ontario. And uh, very happy to be here at the Backers Page House for this event.